Hello there, Julian from Julian Tech TM and today I have the Razer Blade 17 and this particular model costs $6,099 but you do get a free copy of Battlefield 2042 if that makes you or your wallet feel any better. So out of the box, you get the power adapter and another box. And in that other box is the laptop itself, an even smaller box and a gold green message from Razer. In the smaller box, there are stickers, a support card, a message from Ming Liang, a user manual, and a cloth. This model of Razer Blade 17 runs the Intel i9-11900H at base clocks of 2.5GHz and boosts up to 4.9GHz and use the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 mobile. It has a 1TB NVMe Gen 4 SSD with an extra M.2 slot for your future upgrades and 32GB of DDR4 RAM dual channel that's not soldered to the motherboard so you can change it if you want to 64 I guess. And here is the most amazing part, the display. The amazing 7.3 inch 120 hertz touchscreen 4K display. Yes, there's a lot to unpack here. This is my first time handling or using a 4K touchscreen display. Watching videos that are in true 4K is incredible because of the color and the sharpness. It's crystal clear. And the colors on this display is individually calibrated. So it's accurate enough for me for YouTube editing and photo editing, at least for me lah. Which is great for productivity, especially with the CPU, Intel's 8 core 11900H. But for gaming on the other hand, unfortunately you can't make full use of this display because laptop GPUs are still not good enough for 4K ultra settings. To be honest, even the RTX 3090 will struggle in 4K gaming on desktop, much less a laptop. To give you some perspective, the RTX 3080 mobile is very similar to the 3060 TTI on desktop. So having a 120Hz 4K display is quite a waste. As the RTX 3080 mobile can barely push 60fps at 4K, let alone 120fps at 4K. You can however play games with DLSS at 1440p and it will still look great. So you can still have an amazing experience with this display. Just technically speaking, not using the display 100% in gaming. The keyboard's tactility feels as good as any laptop keyboard can get. Though I wish they add a number pad instead of two speakers on the side. There are four speakers on this laptop and playing the best music of all, metal. The sound has great bass but kind of lacks in the trebles and it's real loud for a laptop. The touchpad is good, smooth, accurate and the two empty spots at the sides is where the two batteries are which both total up to 4,583 mAh. Oh ma, ma. The whole laptop weighs 2.75 kilograms. It's definitely a bit on the heavy side, but the chassis is solid. It's built very well with very little screen flex. The cooling on the laptop is pretty good too. Running firm up, it hits 75 degrees on the balanced fan setting and 69 degrees on the highest fan setting. But do note, it gets pretty loud and firm up only stresses the GPU. A lot of times in laptop, the GPU and CPU runs the same heatsink and cooling system. Meaning the heat from both the CPU and GPU will affect each other. Time Spy Extreme runs both CPU and GPU and the temperatures for the GPU at balance fan setting is 73 degrees overall with a max temperature hitting 80 degrees celsius yes 80 degrees at max fan setting though it is 62 degrees overall and a max temperature of 70 degrees so if you're playing games i recommend you put your fan settings to the max setting or you know something better than balance for more optimal performance for cpu performance the single core performance is pretty freaking good so good that it actually beats the amd desktop chips like the 5900X, what? But when benchmarking multi-core performance, I initially got a very low score. 
at least not what is expected from this single core performance. And for some reason, the CPU is only running at 2.5 GHz at the base clock. I thought it was an overheating problem. Turns out it was a power problem. After setting the power to max performance, the CPU clocked 3.5 GHz and came out to 11,180 points. Correct, Leo. And although these benchmarks are great, the 11900H is a lot more expensive than the 11800H. It's about 20 to 30% more expensive throughout the market for 5 to 10% performance improvement. As mentioned earlier, the RTX 3080 mobile on this laptop performs very similar to the RTX 3060 Ti on the desktop. So you can play almost all games at max setting at 1080p, most games at max setting at 1440p, and a few games at 4K with DLSS to hit the 60 FPS average. You know what? Why not I just show you? Okay, now I'm playing Devloop. It's a very popular game now, a single player game that has a bit of multiplayer in it. Uh, super high ratings with this movie, movie blah, game. Now it's on 4K, max settings, no DLSS. This game does, do, I don't think there's DLSS. You can see it's really struggling doing like 36 frames per second. Okay, it feels, it looks real, like if I stand still, it looks so, super good. It's just not cut out for 4K gaming. So let's just try to kill some bad boys here. Yeah, very hard to play. So the audio is actually really good for gaming, not much for music, but for gaming. Like I can really hear that the shots are coming from the left or the right. So you know, we're gonna pause the game, we're gonna put the settings to 4K. Let's see how, how it looks and how it feels. So on the average setting, you average out to 55 to 60 FPS. Still not the best, you want it to be a bit higher, especially with a 120Hz monitor, you know. So, you know, you know, you just have to bring down the resolution. I think we can go 1080p, Full HD, which I think might still look great. Yeah, this is where the textures kind of look a bit less sharp. Yeah, I can see a little bit, a little bit grainy, a little bit pixely. I can see the pixels and stuff. But hey, I'm getting 88 frames per second at ultra settings. Uh, don't forget ultra. So what if we put it at the lower settings? Yeah, this is where it kind of looks crap. It's real smooth though, real smooth. Weirdly enough, I, did, I don't get a lot of uh, improvement. Uh, it's about 120 FPS, 120, 111. I mean, I mentioned it already, the GPU just can't get that 120 hertz yet. But you know what, playing games like CSGO will have a benefit, especially with this CPU because of the single core performance. Back to Studio Julian. Okay, upgradability. To open the Razer laptop, you need a T5 star screw bit. You can add one more NVMe SSD via the M.2 slot and additional RAM, which you still can. Because the RAM is not soldered to the board, you can upgrade that as well. From the two times 16 gigabytes to 2 times 32 gigabytes for a total of 64 gigabytes of RAM. Why do you need it? I don't know, but you can. So the conclusion is this laptop has the best of the best to the point where it doesn't make sense for gamers. You get one of the best CPU, the 11900H, but it's not worth the price. And you get the best GPU for a laptop, the RTX 3080 Mobile, but you can't utilize the amazing 4K touchscreen 120Hz display. Which brings us to the question, who the hell is this laptop for? The practical side of me can see some creators make use of this laptop. There is a SD card slot, Thunderbolt 4, a really good display, accurate colors, touchscreen some more. But at the price point of $6,099, it is a hard sell. From a gamer's perspective, it does perform very well. But more so, we gamers want value from our hardware. And the $6,099 is really very expensive. So who is this laptop really for? I believe it's for that individual that don't care about the price tag. All they care about is getting the best of the best even though it doesn't make sense. And the Razer branding is consistent in that. This logo, okay? This logo. People will buy this laptop because of Razer. Okay. Also, a lot of companies do the most bizarre models, the best of the best models, so that you, the consumer, have an eye on their products. Because you there, yes, you, sitting there, you probably wish you had this laptop, but you can't afford it. So what can you do? You can research and find out that they have different models at a more affordable price. Or even better, you check out their different products, their headset, mouse, keyboard, speakers, desktop, mouse pad, webcam, microphones. Oh my God, they really have everything. Huh? And if you do that because of this laptop, then this laptop has done its job. 
Will I personally buy this laptop at $6,099 with Battlefield 2042? The answer is no. I will not. But do I want it? Oh my god, yes, Razer. Please, don't just loan me this laptop. Give me it. <laughs> Other than that, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you all for your support. I know I've not been uploading a video the last two weeks. Some personal problems. But you know what? It's over. Start afresh. The only place I can go is forwards. If you have any questions about this laptop or anything in general, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. I will try my best to answer as many as I can or all if possible. And other than that, I'm done.